Support for Radio Friends comes from Columbia Healthy Smiles, the dental office of husband and wife team, Dr. Batson and Dr. Abe, offering comprehensive and customized care to patients of all ages. Learn more by calling 573-721-9039 or online at www.columbiahealthysmiles.com. Good morning, and welcome to Radio Friends on Wednesday, September the 28th. We're going to talk about an organization today that is starting their third year in Central Missouri. They've been around for two years, and I I think we had you on probably about the, the time that uh, you came into being, and that's Most Policy Initiative. How did this organization come to be? What you do is you consult for politicians in Missouri, right, for the General Assembly. Right, so we're providing that nonpartisan research information to our General Assembly. Okay, how, I don't think we ever talked about, how did this organization actually come to be? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So we were actually founded by three graduate students at the University of Missouri. All three of them were working on their PhD, two in soil sciences, one in political science. They worked in student government together and said, I think it I think it would be really helpful if our if our decision makers, our state policy makers had access to really good research information to kind of quality evidence. So this was a brainchild of the university? It, by graduate students at the university. And the university was a really great early supporter um, as those students were kind of trying to figure out, you know, how do we get a nonprofit started? What do you do to start a small business? Uh, you know, we were all PhD students. Yeah. So what did you do? How did you get started then? Yeah. So these three founders, they started looking around the country for other similar programs. There were only a handful and nobody in the Midwest. Um, and so essentially what they did is they actually went through the Capitol building down in Jefferson City and just started knocking on every door. One of them would start on the fourth floor, another one would start on the first floor, and they would just go knock on doors, introduce themselves, say what they were trying to do, and get feedback. They basically said, we only want to do this if it's going to work for you. So what would work for you? So you knocked on all of the uh, all of the General Almost Assembly's 200. doors. Uh, 200 doors. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And what kind of response did you get from them? Yeah, it was. I would say it was definitely a mixed response, but we got probably about half of them, if not a little bit more, to sign on to this letter of support that basically said, if you guys started this program, we would support you. We got a resolution from the former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Elijah Har, that also recognized this is an organization um, that wants to provide this nonpartisan support. So kind of through doing that and also being open to taking suggestions, right? There was a program in California that's done really great things, but I think our founders really knew a California program wouldn't work in Missouri, and so how can we mold this to be kind of Missouri-specific? So how did you mold it to be Missouri-specific? Yeah, so there's a couple different ways. I think one of the biggest things is we don't place fellows or researchers in specific offices. So we're really trying to make sure that we're available to everybody across the board equally. Um, and then those fellows are kind of then not, we, we don't call them partisan staff, but they actually are nonpartisan, just trying to get everybody that good information. Um, by also not being in those partisan offices, they're not lobbying or advocating for specific bills. They can actually just go in, talk to 15 different lawmakers and say, here's the research information. Now, now take this and, and use it to make decisions. Is it difficult to keep it nonpartisan, though? If you've got people that are working on something and they feel very strongly about it, yeah. how do you know that it is nonpartisan? No, I think that's a really great question. And I think like the people that we hire, right, they're not magical beings that don't have bias right, in themselves. Right. I'm a human being. I have opinions. I have values. So I think one of the best ways we do this is we have this internal peer review process. So if I'm going to provide research to a lawmaker, at least three of my colleagues also have to look at it. And they try to catch me and call me on things and say, I don't know, Brittany, you know, the way that you that you said that kind of makes it seem like you think this is a better idea than this one. So we really try to hold each other accountable in that way. Um, and then the other thing we do is well, we wait, just, wait, let me stop yeah. you there. What if it is a better idea and it is a bit partisan, but it's a better idea? What, what do you do then? Yeah. So I think what we really see our role is, is not telling people what the better idea is. There might be, let's say there's four different policy options you could do to address 
homelessness, for example, right? There might be one of those options that has a bunch of research that says that this is a really good idea, but maybe the way you go about doing it isn't something that a lot of lawmakers would like. And so we don't really see it as our place to tell them, you have to do it this way. This is the only way. We try to say, here are the options and here's the trade-offs you're going to be encountering. And for some people, they're like, 100%, let's just do whatever the research says. And other people think, yeah, well, this option might not be quite as good as option A, but it saves the, my constituents money and that's really important to me. Or it improves health outcomes for more people and that's really important to me. So I'm not trying to dictate people's values here. I think it's really important for them to be able to overlay that research to their values, to what their communities need. Um, and then, of course, there's advocacy groups in the Capitol that can also use information, research information, to to go for specific mm -hmm. sort of policies. Where do you see this organization going? You've been operating now for two years. Yeah. Do you see it growing? Do you see adding staff? What, 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 where do you see it down the road five years from now? Yes, uh, it's my favorite question. I really think we have the capacity to grow a lot. So right now we're a really small team. There's only five of us. Um, last year we had seven or eight of us. So there's five of you and you're serving 200 um, 200 uh, assemblymen. Yes, and and really, honestly, it's about only three of those five that are doing that work now on the day-to-day. -day. I'm kind of running admin and operations. So I think really at this point, we're, we're funding and funding limited at, at increasing our capacity. Where does your funding come from? So we get most of our funding from private family foundations, which is really great. It means that we'll usually get, you know, $100,000 here for to pay for one or two fellows. Um, but then what ends up happening over time is if a foundation then pulls funding, then we have to change the number of fellows that we have. And that right. varies from year to year. Um, we have state agencies now, so um, different departments that work for the executive branch, also saying, hey, we, we would love some help. Can you come help us? And at this point, it's purely kind of funding limited. And so we're looking for new diverse ways to fund so that we can meet the demand. Because I think it's great, right? More people want evidence. That's a really good place for our organization to be and I think for our state to be. Yeah. So somebody listening out here today, <laughs> you just <laughs> never know. You never know. All right. So the, it's called the Most Policy Initiative. Been around for two years. You have no plans of stopping anytime soon. Not if I can say uh, anything and, about it. And uh, you're serving the community. I appreciate you coming and explaining because we've talked about what you do, but this is the first time we really got in depth. Yeah. About, and the feedback that you get from the politicians, what is it? Is it good, bad, indifferent? Yeah, so, so far it's been really good. My favorite thing that we've heard is that everybody who's responded to our survey says, yes, you guys actually are an objective and nonpartisan source. So for me, what that says is, okay, we actually are doing what we say we're doing. So you're getting the same report from both Republicans and Democrats. Yep. About 61% of our requests come from Republicans, 39% from Democrats. So both sides of the aisle, I think, are really benefiting from this Okay. Work. All right. Thank you so much, Brittany, for coming by. Continued success. And I hope you have many, many more years. <laughs> Thank you so uh, much, Paul. Most Policy Initiative. Okay? If there's something you'd like to hear or see, I'd love to hear from you. Drop me an email. That's pepperp at missouri.edu. And when you go out and about today, be nice to each other. Okay? That's really important. See you later. Bye-bye.